since I don't have any pets, I have to resort to petting my cactus. Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Caitlin from Leaf Me Alone Plants and today we are going to be talking about my silver torch cactus or I guess you could say my cluster of silver torch cacti. Now you might know this plant by the silver torch cactus. You might also know it as the woolly torch cactus or the old man or old lady cactus for, well, obvious reasons. However, despite their awesome appearance and their cool name, they don't seem to get a ton of attention. So I want to make this video for everybody out there who either has one of these plants or um, kind of stumbled upon one of these plants and doesn't know how to take care of it. So you can keep this guy happy and healthy. With that said, let's get into it. Now, these plants are native to Argentina and Bolivia, and more specifically, they're going to be native to the mountainous regions of those areas. So with that in mind, that is going to kind of guide us in how you are going to want to take care of these for inside your house. And while some of the characteristics of the care for these guys is going to be very typical of a normal cactus, some of them are going to be a little unexpected and not what you're probably thinking. So starting out with the basics of watering and sunlight, this is going to be, again, very standard to your typical cactus. Uh, these plants are going to like a bright direct light, full sun if you can give it to them. Um, you can back off of it a little bit. However, if you do, of course, you know, like most plants, they are going to have a slower rate of growth and it is unlikely that they will flower if they are not getting enough sunlight. Now, if you're somebody like me who doesn't necessarily care about flowering too much, um, then that might be fine, but if you are really, really aiming for those plants to go into that bloom cycle, then definitely make sure that you are giving it a fair amount of sunlight. Sunshine, sunshine, sunshine. Now, if you watch my channel often, you'll know that I often give the disclaimer of if you live somewhere that is a super hot, bright climate like Arizona, you are going to want to give it full sun. Um, honestly, with these guys, I have given them full sun in the past. I've recently moved them into the inside of my house, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, I have given these guys full sun, and I believe because they have these woolly stems on the outside, it almost acts as a natural sunblock to them, and they really don't seem to mind it. So, as I normally give that disclaimer uh, for areas like Arizona and Las Vegas and other places like that, um, I do think that you can get away with a full sun situation for these guys. As for watering, in the summer months in Argentina and Bolivia, they will experience a little more rain than normal, so it is okay during those summer months if you want to kind of pump up that watering. However, they are very drought tolerant and with that said, during the winter months, you'll almost want to skip out on watering altogether. Now for me personally, it, honestly, I couldn't tell you how many times since I've owned these guys that I've watered them, but I will say that it's not very many times. The nice thing about cacti like this is typically you can tell that if they're getting thinner, that usually is a sign that they are, you know, either losing water or getting to the point where they could use a drink. So if you start to notice that, that might be a good time to go in with your water and uh, moisten things up in there. Now, if you're listening closely, which you should be, uh, you may have heard me say that I have recently brought these indoors in my house. And the reason for that is the type of climate that these guys are going to like. So native to those mountains, they actually are not going to like super hot temperatures like most cacti. Um, they are going to be more native to cooler temperatures, and what's really interesting is these cacti can actually survive temperatures below freezing. And I'm not talking like 32 degrees, like in the teens, which is so crazy, but also super cool. As somebody who used to live in New York, where it would get super cold in the winter, I always thought that I couldn't really have cactuses because um, I just didn't really have anywhere to put them. So the fact that these plants can tolerate those really low temperatures, I thought was a really, really unique selling point. Maybe it's because, you know, they have like this little sweater on the outside. The best time to wear a striped sweater is all the time. Or maybe it's just because they're cool. Um, not really sure, but either way, if you live somewhere that is a colder climate, they can definitely, definitely tolerate it. Now, typically when you see these guys growing in nature, um, they will be growing kind of in, you know, a cluster like this. So say your friend has one of these little clusters or say that you just happen to stumble upon them in nature and you would like to get one for yourself. The best way to propagate these plants um, is really going to be going down as low to the base as you possibly can, making your cut from there and then letting it root up. I believe I read the rooting time on these is somewhere between eight to 10 weeks. So um, it will take a little while, but they should root up for you as long as you're kind of cutting closer to that base. As for growth on these, they are pretty fast growers, which as always is something that is really attractive to me when I am looking for plants. 
pants. And in terms of how big they can get, well, if you're planning on having one of these for the long haul, then you better get a pretty big spot for them because they can get eight to 10 feet tall. I'll put some pictures over here of mature plants and they are pretty crazy looking. I don't know why this is what comes to mind, but as a kid, I used to watch this like Christmas special of Kris Kringle and it was like this weird claymation style video. There was a strange man who lived in this like snowy fortress and that's what I think of when I see these cactuses. Um, please comment down below if you know what I'm talking about so that I'm not crazy. I'll maybe put a picture here because I swear that I'm not making this up. But back to the cactuses. As I had mentioned, these cacti are capable of putting out these beautiful flowers. They are bright, they're pink. Um, however, there is a caveat to them. Their, their name in Latin, which I'm not going to say because I can't pronounce, but I will put it down below, actually derives from the word closed in Latin. And the reason for that being that even though it does put out these beautiful pink flowers, they very, very rarely open. Instead, they tend to kind of stay closed up on the cactus. Um, and if you are wondering when your cacti will begin to flower, as I mentioned, you are going to need that bright direct light, but somewhere around the time when they get to about two feet tall is when they start to flower. So um, we're probably a little ways off, but I'm hoping that it can happen. Now in the beginning of this video, you may have seen me petting this cactus. Um, these cactus are definitely one that if, I like to say if you are gentle with them, they will be gentle back to you. They of course kind of have this trademark fine white downy hair on the outside. I'm going to sit back down. My light is not going to allow this to like, get captured on camera, but I will do a quick little uh, swoop around with my phone afterwards to put in a video here of them. Um, they're going to find white downy needles on the outside, and then if you look a little closer on the inside, they will also have these um, kind of thicker yellow needles. So if you squeeze the cactus super hard, which I don't know why you would do that, but if for some reason you do, um, you will notice that those prickers on the inside will um, come for you. But as I had mentioned, if you are gentle to this plant, you can definitely touch it. So if you have you know, kids around or something like that and you're worried about them, uh, really going in on this plant, it's not too bad. It's definitely what I consider more of a delicate cactus. Now, as for troubleshooting with these, of course here in Arizona we have very warm temperatures and as I had mentioned earlier in this video, these plants are native to cooler regions. They really do not like to sit in hot weather and that is actually the reason why I ended up bringing these inside into my house to just give it more of a temperature range that it really was wanting because let me tell you, 115 degrees was not it. Not that it's like it for really any of my plants, but these guys really didn't like it. And funny enough, I really wish that I had a picture. Maybe I'll be able to find one on Google, but my local garden center actually got these in over the summer, funny enough. I went there one week, they were new, they were crisp, they're beautiful looking. And then I went there a week later and and they literally looked like they had melted in their pot. All that was left it was this weird fuzzy little skeleton. So um, if you are living somewhere like me and it gets super hot outside, please bring these guys inside because trust me, they will melt down a little bit. Overall, I really have not had any other issues with these guys. I have heard people mention that they can be susceptible to some pests, which um, I do find that, you know, fuzzy type cacti for me. I um, have one of those uh, woolly prickly pears. I've had an ongoing battle with scale on that plant. Um, and if this plant were to get scale, I'm really not confident on how you would go about getting rid of it. So um, I would say really keep your eye out and just be cognizant in making sure that you don't get pests on this plant because I think any pests that you did get on here would be really hard to get rid of. Alright guys, well that is all I have for today, but of course, as always, if you have questions about this plant that I did not answer in this video, please drop them in the comment section down below. I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you have learned something new in this video today, don't forget to hit that like button, and also don't forget to hit that subscribe button, because listen, we got a little giveaway coming up, your girl's coming up on 1,000 subscribers, so we are going to be giving away some plants when we hit that milestone, and uh, I'm sure that we will do other giveaways in the future if you are watching this in the future. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.